Well, I'm joined today by Mark Polden, a barrister, a former in-house counsel for a major media group, and uh, the co-author of The Journalist's Guide to Media Law. Hi, Mark. Hi, good day, Mark. Mm-hmm. We're looking at defamation today, and really, in, in basic terms, can you explain what defamation is to the layperson? Yeah, it's publishing a statement about somebody, whether it can be oral, it's something you say, or it could be by way of a picture, it doesn't matter what medium it's in, and that statement being heard by at least one other person, or witnessed by one other person, and it conveying a meaning which damages the reputation of the person about whom you're saying it. So um, that meaning is something that we call in defamation law the imputation, and usually referred to by defamation lawyers as the sting. What is it that? What's the sting? What's the what's 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 the blow? What's the charge? What's the what's the painful assertion that's contained in what you say? Hmm. Well, that, that's interesting. So that imputation or that meaning, uh, it could be a whole host of things about a person that makes other people think less of them. Uh, what are some examples of those kinds of things that might have uh, come through your career? Uh, one that I think is, um, because it was about a journalist itself, was, was the statement that a particular person, is actually a paparazzo photographer, uh, was a, a cowboy. And that was distilled down into a meaning um, more or less as follows that the plaintiff is a recklessly irresponsible journalist. So words like cowboy you need to be careful of obviously a word like psychopath, sociopath, uh, crook, uh, corrupt is, a, is, is another notorious uh, one. So uh, there, are, there are some that come around and, and you would have seen them as well Mark on a, on, on a on a very very regular basis and I think um, you know, we've, we've both seen um, over the years uh, uh, I guess it will be a craze for a particular phrase or a word amongst journalists it used at one stage to be um, the Prime Minister uh, was tired and emotional and that was in fact code for they were drunk uh, <laughs> so uh, you have to be wary of uh, using phraseology which may on, on the surface be um, uh, be uh, innocent but convey a, a defamatory meaning. Let me give you another example. I, I won't mention the name of the person but there was there was an article in, in a newspaper quite a few years ago that referred to as a, a person as being quote unquote the man with a touch of class. The touch of class is a brothel in Sydney and the person complained over the article by saying that people had interpreted it as, as, as saying that in fact he owned that particular business. So yeah, yep. be, I mean the lesson there I think for journalists is be careful about being clever. I mean it's, it can be funny and terrific and you know if you can prove it it's great but don't think you can have a snide dig without somebody being able to, if you're expecting your readers to pick up on it. Well, it's certainly going to be the case that the person you're talking about will pick up on it as well. That's yeah? great, and that's a good tip. So precise language, not yeah. trying to get hidden meanings across. Yeah. But what other journalistic techniques can try to, can actually protect journalists in some way from defamation action? Well, you and I have talked before about the common sense of approaching people for their side of the story. and. Uh, it's impossible to know actually how many defamation actions have been avoided that way either because the journalist has perhaps started off with an angle and then um, got some other information when they've gone to the person and in fact had to change or change their their approach or it may be uh, that it's just just as important that even if something bad is written about somebody that it doesn't come as a bolt from the blue. I, I think that's that's important. But but as I say, it's, it's very difficult to know how many, you know, bullets people have ducked uh, by doing that. But I, I mean, it's important to be thorough and it's important to be fair, not just from an ethical perspective, but from a legal one as well. Hmm. Now, sometimes um, journalists and students ask me what it actually costs uh, if 
if they lose a de defamation action. And we kind of know through the legislation that there's, there's a cap on, uh, on damage, uh, you know, compensation uh, for emotional hurt and so on. But clearly it could cost a lot more if someone's actually lost money through, uh, through the defamation. And further, there's all of the co court costs. So some of these cases that go right through the, all of the stages of appeal, what does it finish up costing someone who's been sued? Uh, well over a million dollars. Mm. And uh, the, the real difficulty there, uh, I mean, the legacy media could afford to uh, have large amounts of money held in reserve um, against that kind of outcome. Uh, damages are kept at the, you know, capped at the moment. I think it's about 338,000, but aggravated damages um, will increase that. And as you say, uh, damages for economic loss uh, are uncapped, and they could just be enormous. I have seen a claim for two hundred million. Uh, 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 mm. That was a that was a claim, uh, but that 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 and that required um, very serious consideration. Mm. Uh, that was a company that was said to have been put out of business by something that was mm. published. Uh, uh, mm. So um, that, that's at one extreme. The real problem is is cost because. You know, if you if if you win, you lose. It, even as a major publishing house, uh, it, it, the 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 cost of the thing uh, will, will hit very very hard. And in general, the chances of recovering um, m much of that money, um, and certainly of recovering all of it, is, is very very slim. Mm. So. Uh, and we've also got to remember, I suppose, that it's not just the company that might be sued; it, it is the journalist or the the public, the writer themselves. Mark, it's been a, it's been great to chat on these basics, and that two hundred million is a very sobering note to leave it on. But we will be talking about defences, and there is some hope there. There's a lot that can be published within those defences. So, thanks for joining us today. Absolute pleasure.